Hey guys, this is D from GameXTC and today I'm going to show you how to play Bloodborne on your PC using Shad PS4. So if you want to find out how, then keep watching. How do you know? Watch your tone, boy. Not this guy again. So what is Shad PS4? Shad PS4 is a free and open source emulator for the PS4. It supports Windows, Linux and Mac OS. Development of the Shad PS4 started in 2022 and it's come a long way since then. Enough about that, let's get on with it. The first thing you want to do is head over to Shad PS4's website and then click Downloads. At the time of recording this video, the latest version was 0.11. And as I'm using Windows, I chose the Windows options to download. And as usual, all our links are in the description. Now that you can see the download on my desktop using 7-zip, I want to right click and select Extract to Shad PS4. Once extracted, I then delete the zipped folder. You then open the unzipped folder and then launch the application. You may or may not receive a Microsoft Verified App pop-up. If you do, select Install anyway. By doing so, this would launch Shad PS4. Before we get stuck into it, we do need to download one more application. Download PKG Editor. At the time of this recording, the latest version was 0.3.1. And as usual, the link's in the description. Once downloaded, using an application like WinZip, you unzip your downloaded application. Select Extract to PKG Editor. Once unzipped, you delete the zipped folder. You then open Shad PS4, create a new folder and name it after the game you want to add to the emulator. For the purpose of this tutorial, I've labeled mine Bloodborne. You then open your PKG folder and you launch PKG Editor. Now you may receive a Windows Protected Your PC pop-up. If this happens, feel free to select more info and then run anyway. Now if you're a bit skeptical about the file that you've downloaded and you don't want to continue further, then you can simply select Don't Run, which means this will be the end of the installation process and you'll be unable to move ahead. Providing that you're happy to move ahead, you then select File, Open and locate your PKG file and then select export to gp4 project you then locate your newly created folder and select save now as you may or may not know bloodborne is quite a large game so this process will take some time and don't get freaked out if next to pkg editor it says not responding considering that i'm using a low-end pc for this tutorial the process took me approximately five minutes once completed select ok and then you can close the application you can then relaunch Shad PS4. Once launched, you select File, Boot Game, navigate to your newly created folder and select the eBoot file. This will then boot your game. As you can see, the game looks good and runs completely fine. But before we end the video there, let's take a quick look at a few things. So a few things worth noting. If you're using a PS5 controller, a PS4 controller, or an Xbox One controller, the buttons will automatically be mapped, so you don't need to change the controller configuration. The first thing we want to do here is go to Settings and then Configure. You want to navigate to Graphics, and on your graphics device, instead of it saying Auto Select, you can select the graphics card that you want. Under Display Mode, you can choose the default setting and keep it as windowed, or you can select full screen or full screen borderless. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna leave it on windowed. And once you're happy, you click save. Now before I show you how a game actually looks, I want you to also know that in the background whilst your emulator is running, there'll be a background task screen, just like how I'm displaying here. So if there are any errors with your emulator, you can use this screen to debug it. One of the main issues with this emulator is that you do need Vulkan 1.3. If you don't, the emulator will crash and your games won't load. Vulkan is a new generation graphics and compute API that provides high efficiency cross-vendor access to GPUs. So if you do come across an issue, feel free to drop a comment and I'll let you know where you can actually go to get this Vulkan, depending on the spec of your PC. Now let's get back to the emulator. If you do, however, want to configure your controller, you can go over to the controller icon and here you can map your buttons accordingly. Once you're happy with your setup, you click save. So let's go ahead and launch Sonic Mania. So as you can see, the game looks good and runs smooth. So guys, if you found this video useful, please feel free to like and subscribe. And until next time, have a good one.